It's okay, 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 okay. Everybody knows the most explosive and the fastest people on earth, the Usain Bolt, the so on and so forth, list them all down the line, people that are running at the highest speeds. These people are genetically gifted, yes, but really it boils down to science. There are some specific things that we know separate fast from slow, average from fast, and fast from elite. I'm gonna give you the five things that the fastest humans on earth all have in common play your best when it matters most. Number one is force. Hey, side note, did you guys actually know that there's a difference between strength and force? Force is actually quantifiable. Strength is just a quality, okay? Force, we can measure force. Force is uh, typically measured in newtons per kilogram. So when we talk about the fastest humans, they're actually putting more force into the ground. Number two, with that force, they're adding a very specific direction. So we know physics, we probably took it sometime in high school if you didn't major in it in college. Newton, the guy that you know, may or may not know, he actually had some laws that said every action has, go ahead and finish that for me, yes, that's an equal and opposite reaction. So if we wanna actually run forward, we know that we have to actually push backwards but we're upright humans in most scenarios so that we actually have to have push down and back into the ground. The people that are actually the fastest in the world are able to direct that force as backwards as possible, still maintaining good traction with the ground. Three is sticking with this force quality and being able to understand how force is relevant. So force is only relevant as it relates in speed to your body weight. Now we could compare a power lifter, somebody who can squat a thousand pounds versus myself who's 150 pounds and can only squat maybe 250 pounds. Now, does that mean that his body weight to strength ratio is better than my body weight to strength ratio that would allow me to be faster or him to be faster than me? That's all relevant. So he may be 350, 400 pounds squatting that thousand pounds. So in a, in a force aspect, he is trumping me tenfold. But from my standpoint, my body mass is much lower and my strength may be more relevant and relative to being able to push myself in a direction that I wanna go. So body weight to strength ratio is one important factor that all of the fastest humans on earth actually obtain. The fourth thing I wanna talk about is mobility, or what we like to say is range control. So in order to be able to be the fastest human on earth, you've got to be able to move through a specific range of motion. Now it's one thing to be flexible. In other words, your, uh, your joint has the potential or the ability to passively go through a full range of motion, think yoga instructor. However, a sprinter is gonna be much more tight and much more bound by that range of motion to be able to have a lower range of motion or a smaller range of motion, but much better control of every degree of that range of motion. So think about range of motion and specifically term it mobility, and that is how much of your range of motion do you have full control of? Now, when we go back to the fastest sprinters on earth, you have to have a full range of motion to be able to elicit the strongest uh, amount of force down into the ground like we talked about in points number one and number two. So the fastest people on earth have an adequate range of motion, but even more importantly, they have adequate control of that range of motion specifically through their hip joints. The fifth and final thing is elasticity. So what is elasticity? Think about springiness. So they have trained, yes, there's a genetic component to it, but this is a skill that you can develop. They have trained their joints, specifically the tissues that are connecting those joints, to be elastic, to be a little bit more like a rubber band. So that when it is loaded or it makes ground contact and it creates this bend in the joint, it is wound up so that as soon as the next motion moves, it is exploding with, guess what, force to produce a much higher velocity inside of their run. So how do we actually train that? Things like plyometrics, jumps, there's all sorts of different ways to train it, but it is a skill and it is something that all the fastest humans actually have in common. All right guys, that's it. Go ahead and shoot a like down there because we know YouTube likes that. And if you liked this video, take a look at this one where we show you how to decrease your 40 time.